We are on a hillside of the French Alps, September 19, 1846, when a beautiful lady appeared to two children, Maxim and Giraud, 11 years old, and Melanie Calvat, almost 15, who were watching their herd of cows not far from the village of La Salette. Melanie and Maximin met in the small hamlet of Les Ablandes, and they climbed side by side up the mountainside, watching their few cows as they grazed. Melanie was a very innocent, timid, and withdrawn girl, and Maximin a very good, simple, and playful young lad. On this particular day, they shared a small lunch, and they began to feel sleepy, and having moved a couple feet away, they fell fast asleep on the grass. Melanie, sitting up quickly and rubbing her eyes, began to look frantically for the cows. She called to Maximin as she climbed up the hill. From there, she could see her cows grazing peacefully. And she was on her way down and Maximin next to her, when all of a sudden, she saw a beautiful light shining more beautiful than the sun. Maximin, do you see what's over there? Where? Where is it? Within the dazzling light, they gradually perceived a woman, seated on a large stone, her elbows resting on her knees, and her face buried in her hands. She was bent over as if by a sorrow too heavy to bear. They could hardly believe their eyes. She appeared so bright, her hands so drenched with light. Frightened, Melanie let her staff fall to the ground. Maximin, frightened also, still found the strength to reassure her. Keep your staff, Melanie. I'm keeping mine. If she does something to you, I will give her a good whack. The beautiful lady stood up in the globe of light, her face now visible, her hands within her long sleeves crossed in front of her. Immediately, they heard a voice as of a mother calling. Come, my children. Do not be afraid. I am here to tell you great news. She took a few steps towards them. Their fear vanished then and there. Her voice penetrated them like music. They ran down to her and stood very close to her. The same circle of light enveloped them all, in which all shadows disappeared. The beautiful lady wept all the time she spoke. She was tall, and everything about her radiated light. She wore the typical garb of the women of the area, a long dress, an apron around her waist, a shawl crossed over her breast and tied behind her back, and a close-fitting bonnet. Along the hem of her shawl, she wore a broad, flat chain, and from a smaller chain around her neck, there hung a large crucifix. To the left of the crucifix hung a miniature hammer, and on the right were pincers. The radiance of the entire apparition seemed to emanate from this crucifix and shone like a brilliant crown upon the beautiful lady's head. She wore garlands of roses on her head, around the edge of her shawl, and all around her feet. If my people do not wish to submit themselves, I am forced to let go of the hand of my son. It is so heavy and weighs me down so much, I can no longer hold it back. How long a time I have suffered for you. If I want my son not to abandon you, I am obliged to plead with him constantly. And as for you, you pay no heed. 
However much you pray, however much you do, you will never be able to recompense the pains I have taken for you. I give you six days to work, I keep the seventh for myself, and no one will give it to me. This is what makes the arm of my son so heavy. And then, those who drive the carts cannot swear without bringing in my son's name. These are the two things that make the arm of my son so heavy. If the harvest is ruined, it is only on account of yourselves. I warned you last year with the potatoes, you paid no heed. Instead, when you found the potatoes spoiled, you swore and threw in my son's name. They are going to continue to spoil, and by Christmas this year, there will be none left. At this point, Melanie and Maximin did not understand her. The children looked at one another and were confused. They were trying to interpret the word potatoes, thinking she was saying apples instead. Don't you understand, my children? Let me find another way to say it. Using the local dialect, she repeated what she had said about the harvest and then went on. If you have wheat, you must not sow it. Anything you sow, the vermin will eat, and whatever does grow will fall into dust when you thresh it. A great famine is coming. Before the famine comes, children under seven will be seized with trembling and die in the arms of those who hold them. The rest will do penance through the famine. The walnuts will become worm-eaten. The grapes will rot. Our Lady then confided a secret to each of the children. Mary moved her mouth and hands quietly, first to Maximin and then to Melanie. Each child could not hear what she told the other. Then Mary said, If they are converted, rocks and stones will turn into heaps of wheat and potatoes will be self-sown in the fields. Do you say your prayers well, my children? To which they both answered, Hardly ever, madame. Ah, my children, you must say them well, at night and in the morning, even if you say only an Our Father and a Hail Mary when you can't do better. When you can do better, say more. In the summer, only a few elderly women go to Mass. The rest work on Sundays all summer long. In the winter, when they don't know what to do, they go to Mass just to make fun of religion. In Lent, they go to the butcher shop like dogs. Have you ever seen wheat gone bad, my children? No, no madame. madame. Turning toward Maximin, Mary spoke reassuredly to the young lad. But you, my child, Surely you must have seen some once, at the field of Quan, with your father. The owner of the field told your father to go and see his spoiled wheat, and then you went and you took two or three ears of wheat in your hands, you rubbed them together, and it all crumbled into dust. While you were on your way back, your father gave you a piece of bread and said to you, Here, my child, Eat some bread while we still have it this year. I don't know who will eat any next year if the wheat keeps up like that. Oh yes, now I remember. Just then, I didn't remember it. The beautiful lady then concluded, not in dialect, but in French. Well, my children, you will make this known to all my people. Then she moved forward stepping over the stream, and without turning back, she repeated, Very well, my children. Make this known to all my people. The beautiful lady floated above the steep path. Then she rose into the air, just as the children caught up to her. She looked up at the sky, then down to earth. 
Facing southeast, she melted into light. Then the light disappeared. Five years after the apparition, on September 19, 1851, and after a precise and rigorous investigation of the event, the witnesses, the content of the message, and its repercussions, Philibert de Bruyard, Bishop of Grenoble, pronounced his judgment in a pastoral letter of instruction. He declared that the apparition of the Blessed Virgin to two shepherds bears within itself all the characteristics of truth, and that the faithful have grounds for believing it to be indubitable and certain. In another pastoral letter, dated May 1, 1852, the Bishop of Grenoble announced the construction of a shrine on the mountain of the apparition. Mary's apparition at La Salette is a modern-day reminder of an ancient truth, that Mary constantly intercedes for us before God, that she is the reconciler of sinners, calling us back to the message and the way of her Son, Jesus. <laughs>